Now that Johnny 5 is installed and the Arduino is configured, let's see how to actually put the framework to use with a simple LED circuit. Now it should go without saying, but before I go over the circuit diagram here, I just want to say, please be very careful when wiring up the circuit. Electricity is nothing to joke about, so make sure all power sources are unplugged, such as the Arduino itself, while wiring everything up. Now if you are not comfortable wiring up the circuit, you can still follow along with the course. You just won't be able to see the results of your work without the physical circuit, but I will show you the end results through a webcam as I progress through the course. Alright, now that I have my safety announcement out of the way, here's a diagram of the circuit I've constructed for this demo using the fritzing application. Now the target of the upcoming demos is the red LED over here on the right. The LED is going to be powered by digital pin number 11, and the circuit includes a 220 ohm resistor to avoid overloading the LED. The circuit is then closed off with a jumper wire tied to the ground pin. I chose pin number 11 because I will be demonstrating a function that requires a pin that supports PWM, or pulse width modulation. PWM pins are marked with a tilde on the board, as you can see here. Now if you're not familiar with PWM, it's essentially a way for a digital pin to mimic analog behavior, as digital pins support just two states, on and off, or high and low. Now the nature of these pins obviously limits what you can do, so PWM was introduced to allow for other behaviors such as fading LEDs in and out, for example, or to control servos and the speed of DC motors. Now I'm not going to do a deep dive into PWM here, so if you'd like more information on it, I've included a link in this lesson you can hit up. Now one other thing to note too, is that the current flows through a diode in one direction. Being that LED stands for light emitting diode, you need to ensure that the LED is plugged into your breadboard properly. This particular LED has two legs, so to speak, one called an anode and the other one called a cathode. Typically, the anode will be marked with a little curve, such as in this diagram, or the anode will be longer than the cathode, which is the case with the actual LED I will be using in the demo. The anode should be tied into the power source and the cathode should be tied to the ground so that the current flows from anode to cathode. Now that should cover all the circuit details, so let's get into the actual code. 